Not electric type, you say? As I have an obviously clickbait Pokemon like Pikachu on the thumbnail. Well, yeah, it got you to click, right? So it's not that bad. But truly, some of these Pokemon really should not be electric type. Or... Should all Pokemon be electric type? Pokemon are basically animals, which are just hunks of meat that get tickled by electricity to secrete juice that makes the meat do its bidding. So really, when you get down to it, aren't we all electric type? But we're not here to have an existential crisis. We are talking about the magical world of Pokemon, where a mouse could probably kill you. And oh boy, are there a lot of electric rodent Pokemon. It's like their mascot is one or something. And they had to make a bunch of failed clones to try and repeat Pikachu's success, but none of them worked, truly. Except for the one non-electric one. That one got popular. But if we take a quick glance at all of the electric types, oh, there they, there they went. All of them. See? Gone. Now, they all seem to fit into the electric typing rather well, save one or two. Which those are? You'll have to find out. Because overall, nearly every single electric type's Pokemon's origins and reasonings for being electric type can be explained. That's right, Game Freak really went all out with their mascot's typing. There are a few oddball ones, but hey, it wouldn't be Pokemon if everything was straightforward. So to add meat and substance to this video, I'm going to be categorizing if a Pokemon's electric typing is due to it being AC or DC. And no, we're not talking about what type of Australian rock band they are. We are talking about if they are utilizing an alternating current of electricity or a direct current. And for all of you non-electricians out there, let me key you in on a few major points and differences between the two. AC, or alternating current, describes the flow of charge that changes direction periodically. As a result, the voltage also reverses along with the current. AC is used to deliver power to houses, office buildings, etc., and is used primarily at high voltages. Thus, less energy is lost in electrical power transmission. Higher voltages means lower currents, and lower currents means less heat generated in the power line due to resistance. So, it's much more efficient at long distance transmission, essentially. DC, or direct current, is a lot more straightforward. Instead of oscillating like AC, the voltage charge is constant, meaning it does not change. Imagine a tank of water with a hose. The tank can only push water one way out the hose. And similar to our DC producing batteries, once the tank is empty, water no longer flows through the pipes. DC has many more uses than AC because of its constant voltage. Unfortunately though, it is rather hard to have it travel long distances. And unfortunately, this is a Pokemon video, not a Thomas Edison versus Tesla discussion. So let's get back to the Pokemon right after the intro. Now, we know there are things that can shock you in the real world. Ah, oh, Snake is back! Snake is back! Oh! And, oops, did I say we're going back to Pokemon? <laughs> no, just the ocean. The closest thing to the real world Pokemon world we have, though. So many weird fish. Like the infamous Electric Eel. A real life electric type, essentially, and the basis of our friend Electros. This eel has three special organs that help it create electricity. And to spare you the fine details, it works like a battery, slowly charging up chemicals called electrolytes. Once the eel spots its prey, it opens an ion channel, allowing sodium to pass over the electrolytes, creating a difference in charge. This makes the electricity jump out and ground itself through the water, shocking anything unlucky enough to be close to it. To humans, it feels like just a little shock, but to a tiny fish, it is deadly. But Pokemon are a bit different. They seem to be able to create vast amounts of power and then almost choose where and when it discharges. So either they are really good at aiming the unaimable, or they are actually able to manipulate the path of energy. It's like they're magic or something. So, we're going to categorize these Pokemon into groups like normal, and first up are the AC Pokemon. At first we thought there were going to be more of them, but it turns out there's just a few, and all of the rest are DC. So yeah, AC category first, and then we'll split DC up even more. You see, AC, like we talked about earlier, alternates, normally via some sort of mechanism. A loop of wire is spun inside of a magnetic field, which induces a current along the wire. The rotation of the wire can come from any number of means, a wind turbine, a steam turbine, flowing water, even max turning a big old crank. Because the wire spins and enters a different magnetic polarity periodically, the voltage and current alternates on the wire. Which brings us to why so few Pokemon are AC. Most 
Pokemon don't have literal generators on them, but fortunately some do, or are based off of how generators work. In this category of AC Pokemon we have Zekrom, Rotom, Magnemite, Magneton, Magnezone, Zerkatry, and maybe even Voltorb and Electrode. The strongest candidate, Zekrom, literally has a generator for a butt. It literally is an electric motor that spins, so for sure it's AC. Also being the Pokemon of ideals works well. Ideals are constantly changing and adapting as time goes on. It's like an alternating current. Whereas Zekrom's counter, Reshiram, is the Pokemon of truth, a fire type, because the truth always stays constant and burns. Yet it is always there and purified. Next is Rotom, a ghost able to possess motors, hence its name being motor but backwards. Almost all of the appliances they are able to possess either run off of AC or have AC-like motors. The only one that's a little iffy is Mo Rotom, but there are electric mowers that run off of a cord, so I guess I guess that one still works. Basically, Rotom is electric because he is the machine spirit of the Pokemon world, the Emperor Protect. Next is the Magnemite line. It's definitely based off of magnets and the electrical currents created using magnets, making it electric type and its source of energy is similar to AC generation. As explained earlier, power can be created by passing a magnet across a wire. In fact, most power production in the world is based off of this simple mechanic. Now, I'm not saying that Magnemite for sure has a small generator inside of it, but we also don't know if it doesn't. And at the very least, it seems to create power via magnets, which are inherently alternating due to the rotation generally needed. And these magnets do spin after all. Then we get to the Ultra Beast Circuitry, based off of power lines and a, a tree, I guess. This Ultra Beast is said to shock everything and everyone around it. And much like real life power lines, this Pokemon may have high voltage AC power, as almost all power lines are. As for Voltorb and Electrode, Interestingly enough, these Pokemon could be AC or DC. There simply isn't enough data pointing us in any direction. They could be AC, as they appear to be somewhat man-made and are often used in power plants, but being used in power plants doesn't necessarily mean they are AC. Neither does them being man-made, so really we just don't know. They might have a little generator in there, they might not. And thus, they are a good segue into our next category, because that's it for the AC Pokemon. All of the rest of the Electric-type Pokemon are DC. And yes, even the Electric Eels of our own world are using a direct current. Though obviously, leaving the categories at this would make this category massive. So let's break it up further. The next set of Pokemon are all DC, but they are also not necessarily given the Electric-type because of electricity directly, per se. This next category is more or less Pokemon that have electrical powers, but they really really shine somewhere else. I'm talking lighting, not lightning, lighting. Get that N out of there. Light bulbs is what I'm talking about here. I'm talking the Shinx, Mareep, Blitzel, and Chinchou lines. All of these Pokemon are electric, but for different reasons than merely being able to shock things. Sure, all of them can, but their true power is in their bioluminescence. In the Pokemon world, light equals power, apparently. Except for Illumise and Volbeat. They didn't get invited to the party. All of these Pokemon can generate electricity, sure. I mean, that's why they are electric type and not light type, which I seriously hope they never add that as a type. The Shinx line is a little odd, but super cute and then cool looking. They wind up becoming a dazzling Lynx. Luxray and Luxio are based on similar ideas. Even the first half of their name, Lux, means light in Latin. And Lynx are known for their gleaming bright eyes and terrific night vision, after all. And you can see by their tufts of fur all over here that it's definitely a Lynx and not a lion. Ampharos is apparently able to be seen as a beacon, almost like a lighthouse at sea. And its previous evolutions also have bright bulbs on their butts. And the name points us to Egyptian kings, pharaohs, which are said to be the gods incarnated as humans. Gods with creation power, which is often associated with light. Chidshaw and Lantern are based off of anglerfish who use their bioluminescent light to entice their prey closer. And remember, light generation equals electric type. <sighs> Sometimes. Finally, Blitzel and Zebstrika are just edgy zebras. They are in this category because they seem to communicate by brightly flashing their mane, similarly to lightning bugs, except they are horses. And the next category are Pokemon that use electricity to enhance their speed. And trust me, there are more than you think. It's a classic anime trope at this point that electricity means fast. And it makes some sense. Light is commonly seen as energy, thus electricity. And heck, light is pretty fast. But did you know that the electricity in our wires is much closer to the speed of honey flowing down a 45 degree angle? But lightning is very fast, so I understand. And while all of these Pokemon can use electricity and store it, they really outpace the competition when it comes to speed. 
In this category, we have Electric, Mectric, Zerora, and Raikou. While they may also fit into other categories, and other Pokemon would fit in this category too, I feel like this is a really good way of organizing them anyway, so hush. It's a Venn diagram. So, much like Kilua, Zoldic's Godspeed ability, the Pokemon here bypass their own brain signal to their muscles by directly putting electrical signals into their muscles bypassing their brain's otherwise slow response time. How that works, I will never know. Electrike's Pokedex entry even states that this Pokemon stimulates its leg muscles with electric charges. These jolts of power give its legs explosive acceleration performance. Another entry of Manectric, its evolved form, states that it eases its soreness with electricity too, so it can recover quickly as well, which has been shown to be true even in us humans. Electrical stimulation therapy exists and helps to a degree against soreness and inflammation in large muscle groups. Also, Bonus fact, Manectric may be based on the Raiju, a lightning spirit that takes the form of a wolf. Also, its mouth looks like an alligator clip, which are used to attach electrical cabling. And now we have an excuse to have an electric alligator Pokemon, and I want that desperately. Then we have the legendary Raikou, which is stated to be able to run as fast as lightning, which let me say is very fast, like lightning fast. Roughly 750 miles per hour fast, and based on the name, it has origins in the Japanese god of lightning. Zeraora is also capable of running as fast as lightning, and electricity sparks off of it as it does so. This thing is supercharged to the max, though I guess you kind of have to be when you're constantly running from... artists. The next category of Pokemon are thieves, or are known to steal power. While they may also be able to create their own electricity, these Pokemon seem to more so absorb it from their surrounding sources. Much like having a rechargeable battery in their bodies, rather than having an organ that can generate it. Elekid, Electabuzz, and Electivire can be seen hanging around power plants like many other Pokemon in this category. Previously, they were thought to cause blackouts, but Electabuzz has now been freed from this claim as of the Sun and Moon Pokedex entries. It turns out the cause of these outages was more often an error on the part of the Electric Company. Or as before, it was believed these Pokemon just gobbled up all the power at power stations, which they can do, just not as commonly as the Electric Company wants you to think. Joltik and Galvantula seem to be power hogs. Joltik is a little jumping spider with tick elements that leeches jolts or energy instead of blood from its hosts, while Galvantula uses power line like webs to shock and ensnare Pokemon. Also, fun fact, Galvantula's name comes from tarantula and galvanism, which is the act of contracting muscles using an electrical current. Essentially what the speed category Pokemon did. Voltorb and Electrode we touched on earlier. They could have AC generators inside of them, but I'm more inclined to believe they are a DC-based electric generator. But a very volatile one, because they sure do love to explode. But according to Stadium's dex entry, they have been seen drawing power from trolleys of electric trains. The Electrodes have also been seen congregating at electrical power plants to feed on electricity that has just been generated which makes me wonder if fresh electricity tastes better. Plusle and Minin are two Pikachu clones that love to help out each other. They're pretty much positive and negative Pichus. These little rascals use electricity to make spark pom-poms and cheer each other on. Plusle's Pokedex entry states that it cheers on friends with pom-poms made of sparks. It drains power from telephone poles. Meanwhile, Minin's entries do not state whether or not it generates its power, but I feel like since these two Pokemon are so close, we can assume that they gain power from the same source. And, as telephone poles are normally an alternating current, it's quite possible for both a positively and negatively charged Pokemon to gain power from it, each drawing from one of the alternating currents. And now we're on to the next category of Pokemon, Pokemon that generate their own static or use static electricity from the surrounding air, rather than being made by man. Though, not necessarily. We all know that if you rub your feet on carpet, nothing happens. But if you put on a pair of soft socks, you'll start to build up a nice, static aura. Or simply rubbing a balloon on your hair will make the hair start to stand on end because they are being pulled by the static charge. So how does that work? Well, caused by friction, static charge generally occurs when a non-conductive material and insulator are rubbed together. The friction and motion allows the charges on the insulated item to build up. A little fact of nature is that it likes to be in equilibrium, meaning a balance. Once a particular item has enough of a difference in charge, the charge wants to escape. Now, air doesn't like to be disturbed, but it's also kind of a pushover. So once the charge is large enough to overpower the resistance of the air, it immediately dissipates out, creating balance once again. And now, that's on a small scale. But it's not just little zaps and crackles, no! Static electricity can grow big time, in fact, lightning 
is a static charge, just on a much bigger scale. It's friction produced by huge million pound clouds, creating huge differences in charges compared to the ground. Now then, the Pokemon in this category are Mareep, Flaffy, Oricorio in its pom pom style, Jolteon, Tynamo, Electrike, Electra, Stungfisk, Chargebug, Vikavolt, Zapdos, Thunderous, Helioptile, Basilisk, Dedene, Pachiritsu, Emolga, Pichu, Pikachu, Raichu, and Togedemaru. Flaffy and Mareep are sheep. Beep beep, and all that wool generates a ton of static electricity, which they then use to power their light bulbs. And that's why you get to see them twice. Want to see them again? Here's a whole video about why they lose their wool as they evolve. It's quite fascinating. Now, the Pikachu clones. Oh yeah, and Pikachu. This little mouse, the faithful mascot of the franchise. Good lord, I'm glad it wasn't Clefairy. Can you imagine? These small mice are able to generate electricity as they sleep, possibly just absorbing the residual static around it and then amplifying it. As the Pokedex entry states that while sleeping it generates electricity in the sacks in its cheeks. If it's not getting enough sleep, it will be able to only use weak electricity. And it's stated that if you touch their little cheeks, you'll get a nasty shock. All of which makes these pouches quite similar across most other Pikachu clones. Emolga and Pachiritsu are both electric squirrels that also share these cheek pouches, although they seem to use the electricity differently. Emolga uses it to help it fly and glide across the sky, and Pachiritsu likes to store it in trees. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep, like a nut. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's not like it would just instantly ground out through the tree and dissipate. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid squirrel. Other clones include Dedene, which is a tiny Pikachu with antennas in its cheeks, helping it both absorb and dissipate electricity, and Togedemaru, the lightning rod, who loves to steal electricity from other Pokemon due to its underdeveloped ability to produce its own electricity. And finally leaving the Pikachus, next is Oricorio, pom-pom style. These fast-moving little burbs are super cute. Based off of the dancing style of cheerleaders, this high-energy dance really captures the essence of speed. Also, rubbing together pom-poms in this way creates a good deal of static electricity. Jolteon's method of electric generation is odd. Out of all of the ways to get electricity, Jolteon chooses the slow route of just absorbing the charge. How it attracts charged ions from the atmosphere, I'm not sure. But hey, it's a Gen 1 Pokemon, so it doesn't really need to make sense. Chargebug and Vikavolt are batteries, or at least Chargebug looks like one and apparently works like one. According to the Dex entry, its body is capable of storing electricity. On camping trips, people are grateful to have one around. Like, can't we go camping for once without having all of these gadgets? We're in nature for a reason, people! <clears throat> but it also explains that it generates electricity from its electro sack. It may work similarly to the electric eel of our real world. Speaking of electric eels, the Electros line are based off of it. Fun fact, the electric eel isn't actually an eel. It is in fact a knife fish. An, it's an off-brand eel, essentially. And pretty much the same as the real world eel, these Pokemon create electricity from their own electric sacks although they are able to make a much bigger shock. And some point to these Pokemon's leech-like appearance, and assume that on top of electric generation, they also suck electricity from underwater power lines. Stunfisk. Now you would think that, yeah, it's based off of the eel thing because it's also a fish, but you'd be wrong. In fact, there is a real-life fish called the Electric Ray. Stunfisk looks like a flounder mixed with a manta ray. Sort of. And this Electric Ray also has the same shocking defense and attack abilities that the electric eels have. Helioptile and Heliolisk are lizards that use the sun to gain power. Now you'd think, duh, all lizards need the sun to move because they are cold-blooded, and you're right, but these guys are pretty much literally solar panels. Heck, they don't even need to eat if it's a sunny day. They can photosynthesize their own energy, much like the real world spotted salamander. Thunderous is basically Raijin, the Japanese god of lightning. I mean, look at it. And thus, it is the Pokemon equivalent to an elemental deity, the god or guardian of thunder and lightning. Now, that being said, it is also very similar to Zapdos. They both control lightning, possibly gaining this power by flying through clouds, creating huge amounts of static electricity on themselves. Or, they just absorb the static from the clouds, giving them huge amounts of power that they can use at their own leisure. And now we reach the final category. Uh, other. I suppose. Here we have the Alolan Geodude line and Tapu Koko. The Alolan Geodude line are rock Pokemon that seem to be magnetically charged. Now, you can take any ordinary metal and magnetize it in a few ways. One is striking it with another strong magnet or metal, giving or taking charge away from the first one. Other ways include running a current through the metal. This gives the object a magnetic field. Geodude and Graveler just seem to have charged metallic rocks inside and on their rocky body, but Golem is on a whole nother 
another level. Based off of their design and its Pokedex entries, golems are miniature railguns, guns that fire using the power of electromagnetism. And these golems even go as far as to shoot other Geodudes at their targets. Where they get their electricity from, though, is a mystery, but they most definitely are electric type for a good reason, due to their whole electromagnetic thing. And now, Tapu Koko. The one electric type Pokemon that doesn't really need the electric type, at least not based on its origins. Tapu Koko, translated through various Polynesian languages, translates into a number of things, the coolest being God's blood, but more accurately to what Tapu Koko actually is, it's most likely translated to holy chicken noise. It's based off of the Hawaiian deity Ku, one of the eternal gods that have existed since forever, and is often depicted as feathered, like a chicken. Now, you would say, hey, Tapu Koko is based off of a god, so it's probably a god of lightning or thunder, but no. Ku is well known as the god of war, conflict, heck, even the god of fishing, but not lightning. That title is held by Kane, another old god, and the one that Tapu Lele is based on. The heck is going on here, Game Freak? Well, these main four Hawaiian gods that the Tapus are based on are each gods of many different things. Kane was the highest of the gods and the creator deity. Lightning is just one thing that it happens to have control over, as light is often associated with creation. But all of Kane's other aspects, such as being the wisest, the creator of the body, mind, and soul, etc., do point to the psychic type more so than it happens to be able to control electricity pointing to electric. After all, being able to control lightning is just one of the smaller aspects of Kane. Tapu Koko, then, is based more on Ku, due to Ku being the god of war, and we see Tapu Koko moves in a very war dance-like way which are very common among Polynesian warriors. So the electric type may simply come from it being fast, like some previous Pokemon, but they are mostly all based on other things as well. And clearly Tapu Koko is the fastest of the four, by far, but overall, looking at all of the electric type Pokemon, Tapu Koko has the weakest reasoning for being electric type. Well, we'll do a video about the Tapus at some point, and maybe in that research we'll find the real reason. But what do you think, both about this whole Tapu Koko thing, and about the rest of the electric type Pokemon? And what type should I do next? And be sure to check out this playlist of all of the other types we've covered so far, just in case you missed some. And until next time, please remember to never stop using that noggin.